Hello and welcome to my presentation. Uh, in this presentation, um, I'm going to be covering the history of wireless telegraphy, um, important uh, people uh, in the development of it, and um, why Marconi isn't the only person or the only father of radio. My name is Nick Bignall, and I'd like to start uh, by talking about this man. He is a German physicist called Carl August von Steinheil, who started his work quite early on, in uh, 1838 actually. Uh, he did an experiment um, in the conduction of uh, telegraph messages. Um, and he was experimenting with uh, railway tracks. And um, what he was trying to do was use them to uh, see if he could uh, use them as transmission uh, systems for telegraph messages. But he was very unsuccessful in doing this. Um, but he did a lot of work and research and experimentation which led him to uh, an important belief, which is that uh, one day um, telegraphing, as it was known back then, uh, would be done entirely wirelessly. Uh, which brings me to my next figure, uh, Samuel Morse. Um, spent a lot of his time working in America. We know him best for the invention of Morse code, but um, he did a few other experiments into conduction as well. Um, Morse code being, of course, a series of dots which can be represented as uh, beeps or flashes. It was used with uh, telegram and uh, telegraphs. Um, but uh, the experiment of Morse's I'll be talking about today is his experiment where he uh, uh, laid two uh, electrical wires down next to a canal and found that they used the uh, water, the adjacent water, as a means of conduction. So this helped him in his experiments and helped us understand a little bit more about uh, how messages could be uh, telegraphed and conducted. Um, Maxwell, another important person. I have a video which I'll be showing in a second. Um, he comprised a very uh, dynamic theory about electromagnetism and the possible existence of electromagnetic waves. He uh, submitted his paper to the Royal Society. I'm now going to play a video on Maxwell so that we can understand a bit more about who he is and what his contributions were and why he's important. James Clerk Maxwell was a Scottish physicist and mathematician who helped shape our understanding of the modern scientific world. Maxwell was born as John Clark in Edinburgh to a wealthy and aristocratic family. He was homeschooled until the age of eight, and he was then sent to the prestigious Edinburgh Academy after his mother died. He wrote and presented his first scientific paper to the Royal Society of Edinburgh when he was just 14 years old, but his paper was rejected as he was believed to have been too young to have written the paper himself. At the age of 16, Maxwell attended classes at the University of Edinburgh, and at 18 he presented two more papers to the Royal Society, but was again deemed too young to have written the paper, so it was presented by his tutor at the time. He then moved to Cambridge University in 1850 and graduated with a degree in mathematics, then moved to Aberdeen University where he formulated a theory on the 200-year-old question on Saturn's rings and how they remain stable without breaking up or crashing into the planet's surface. The young Maxwell solved the mystery and his theories were confirmed by the Voyager Space Shuttle over a hundred years later. Maxwell then moved to King's College London where he produced the world's first colour photograph and experimented with electromagnetism. Through this work, Maxwell laid the foundations for the modern applications of television, radio, radar and microwaves, as well as infrared technologies. He worked on telescopes and thermodynamic theories, and developed many mathematical equations and theories that explained and summarized mathematical thinking at the time, which laid the foundation work for Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity, as well as the quantum theory made famous by Max Planck. Maxwell died at the age of 48, but his contributions to science are considered to be equal to those of Einstein and Isaac Newton. In the Millennium Survey of the Greatest Physicists of All Time, Maxwell was voted third behind Einstein and Newton, and he is seen as the scientist who most influenced the scientific thought of the 20th century. So, Maxwell was a very uh, influential person to uh, a lot of people, and his uh, theory covered a lot of things. His work uh, obviously wasn't um, limited to um, wireless telegraphy, but uh, he did do a lot there, and his theory helped a lot of people understand what they were doing better, so they could make better contributions to wireless telegraphy and uh, its developments. Um, I'd now like to talk about uh, Graham Bell, who we all know as the inventor of the telephone from Scotland. Um, he didn't uh, focus on inventing the telephone specifically, but he wanted to improve the telegraph. Um, 
and he did this, uh, well his musical knowledge helped him understand how he was going to be able to convey a lot of speech messages all at the same time. But he did this and resultantly we have uh, a telephone as an invention. In 1877, he and his assistant Watson had the long distance telephone conversation between New York and Boston. And it was the first long distance conversation that was recorded. However, it was done through wires. Uh, Heinrich Hertz, another very important figure. Um, that video talked about how Maxwell influenced Einstein and another scientist called Max Planck. And he also influenced Hertz, who we all know as being responsible for the discovery of electromagnetic or EM waves. Uh, these, of course, include radio waves. And what he'd do is he'd sit in his lab um, and make waves, measure, measure them, um, and found that they differed uh, in terms of things like length and speed. I now have another video on radio waves which talks uh, not about Hertz per se, but more about uh, how Hertz discovered uh, radio waves and what they're used for, you know, besides listening to the radio. Guglielmo Marconi's first radio transmissions in 1894 have spread into space for over 100 years at the speed of light. They passed Sirius in 1903, Vega in 1919, and Regulus in 1971. That signal has already passed over 1,000 stars. Anyone orbiting one of those stars with a really good receiver could detect Marconi's signal and know that we are here. Radio waves are the longest and contain the least energy of any electromagnetic wave. While visible light is measured in minute fractions of an inch, radio waves vary from about 19 centimeters, about the length of a water bottle, to waves the length of cars, ships, mountains, all the way up to monstrous waves longer than the diameter of our planet. Heinrich Hertz discovered radio waves in 1888. The first commercial radio station went on the air in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on November 2nd, 1920. Then, in 1932, a major discovery by Carl Jansky at Bell Labs revealed the stars and other objects in space radiated radio waves. Radio astronomy was born. However, scientists need giant antennas to detect weak, long wavelength radio waves from space. The enormous Arecibo radio dish antenna measures 305 meters in diameter, over three football fields. Scientists can link the signals from an array of separate radio antennas to focus on tiny slices of distant space. Such arrays act as a single immense collector. This giant New Mexico array uses 27 parabolic dish antennas shaped into a giant Y, with each arm capable of stretching for 13 miles. Scientists have even spread these linked antennas across the globe. One of the largest stretches from Hawaii to the Virgin Islands and acts like such a powerful telephoto lens that a baseball sitting on the moon would fill its entire field of view. Many of the greatest astronomical discoveries have been made using radio waves, pulsars, the existence of giant clouds of superheated plasma, which are among the largest objects in the universe, and even quasars, such as this one over 10 billion light years away, were all discovered using radio waves. Radio waves also provide more local information. Astronomical objects that have a magnetic field usually produce radio waves, such as our sun. Thus, NASA's stereo satellite is able to monitor bursts of radio waves from the sun's corona. Wave sensors on the wind spacecraft record the radio waves emitted by a planet's ionosphere such as the bursts from Jupiter, whose wavelength measures about 15 meters. Radio waves fill the space around us to bring entertainment, communications, and key scientific information. We can't hear these radio waves. When you tune your radio to your favorite station, the radio receives these electromagnetic radio waves and then vibrates a speaker to create the sound waves we hear. We may not be able to tap our toes to the cosmic radio transmissions, 
But we certainly discovered much of that our universe's grand cosmic dance by li listening to them. So when Hertz discovered radio waves, he wasn't just limiting himself to that. Um, there is a whole spectrum that we need to consider. So you've got visible light, ultraviolet, um, it all comes down to science. Um, also includes x-rays and gamma rays. Some of these, of course, are harmful to us. So while we're listening to a show on Radio 1 or 4 or something, you know, we've, we're listening to some radio waves, uh, but we don't think about the fact that other radio waves can kill us. Now, Oliver Lodge was a professor at Liverpool University. Um, he was inspired by uh, a man called Branley, who was the inventor of a, of a device called a coherer which increased the distance um, of, at which uh, messages could be telegraphed. Um, Oliver Lodge was doing his own experiments into EM waves, um, but uh, he wasn't as experienced in physics as uh, some of the people before him. So he couldn't quite get his calculations correct at times, so he was working with someone um, under their supervision. But uh, once he got his job at uh, Liverpool University, um, he, this would take up a lot of his time, so he had to he abandoned his work in EM waves, and he was doing some work on it before Hertz was. But uh, Hertz uh, went ahead, did the work, and resultantly got the credit for it. Um, Nikola Tesla, the forgotten man, um, part Italian, part American, known for uh, the invention of uh, alternating current. Um, in radio, though, he's known for his development of the uh, Tesla coil, which is a device that uh, resonates and produces radio, radio waves. And he got two of his Tesla coils and resonated them at the same frequencies and was able to transmit radio waves between them. Uh, he did a couple of other experiments as well in radio. And uh, worldwide, he filed over 700 patents. So a lot of people working in the same field, such as Marconi, for example, were using Tesla's technology. And Tesla and Marconi did have a bit of a a rivalry going on, although they were in two different parts of the world, they were working towards the same goal. And Marconi was using 17 of Tesla's patents. Um, and that's really why Marconi, although he's a very uh, well experienced man in radio, he's uh, not the be all and end all. Um, but uh, Tesla was held back by a, a fire in his uh, laboratory, which destroyed a lot of his work. So while he was the main man in uh, America, um, Marconi would file, yes, one of the first uh, radio patents, but uh, in America he wasn't seen as being important. Um, Tesla was the main, the main person, but of course Marconi got the credit for it. He's uh, done some still good things in the, the developments though. Um, the device I mentioned, the Coherer, invented by Branley, he perfected this and used it in a lot of his, uh, a lot of his work. And um, it was from about 18, 1898 onwards that Marconi would uh, excel and go on to form the BBC and a few other people. And of course, he had set up and made good developments with his own radio station, 2MT. Um, some people, however, may consider this man as one of the fathers of radio. This is Alexander Popov from Russia, who uh, in 1890, uh, 1895 set uh, sent a message from um, a Russian Navy ship back to his lab in uh, St. Petersburg and he did a few other experiments later on in uh, 1896 and 1898 but um, because he didn't file any patents and because he wasn't working in many other places around the world apart from Russia he wasn't as well known and of course he's quite well known and respected by Russians so in this presentation, I've covered a history of wireless, how it came to be. Um, I wanted to talk about why Marconi isn't the main man, uh, or at least he's not the be-all and end-all in radio, although we know him very well for his experiments uh, from between Cornwall and Newfoundland, and for, uh, and for basically being the uh, fourth frontier of the BBC. But um, no, he's not the only man. Involved. I've talked about uh, how radio works in terms of uh, radio waves and the spectrum. So I've gone into a lot of detail and uh, science depth 
uh, in this presentation. I'm now concluding it there. Uh, here are my references, and I'm happy to take any questions anyone has. Is there anything I could have covered that you want to ask me about? Was uh, one happy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool.